Hi everyone, so I've been blasting the early access for Vessel of Hated quite a lot and one of those big new features that is coming is the Dark Citadel. This is a co-op 2 to 4 player dungeon. It's like a mini raid, like you might know that a little bit from you know, World of Warcraft or something like that. I don't think they call it raid, but that's basically what it is. It has a weekly lockout. It is located here in uh, the uh, middle of uh, Nahantu, basically. It's the Rise of Kazra uh, waypoint. And this is like a little town hub. And then you have three separate wings that you can enter and defeat those bosses. So the cool part about this is that you get actually like a big chest at the end that has like a lot of stuff in there. And you can get exclusive cosmetics, but there's nothing like character progression wise locked behind this. So you're not forced into co-op mode, but it is a nice new feature. And I had a lot of fun actually learning it and uh, playing it with my friends here, for example. Actually, I have uploaded a full run of the entire playthrough, or I will upload that at least. We have recorded that. Uh, so you can actually like uh, watch us learn it and uh, experience the entire thing. It was pretty funny. So we went through that in like one and a half hours. And if you speed on it, it can do it way faster. I think that you know, good clear times later on for the entire thing will be somewhere in the range of like 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. Uh, so you can do it pretty fast if you want to, at least as long as you understand everything and you just blast through and kill everything instantly. And uh, it is definitely going to be quite a challenge to complete at least the first times around, especially on the higher torment difficulties. On torment 4 especially, I think it's going to be pretty tough for most people. But uh, for example, just getting the weekly cash or so on, this is also doable on torment 1. So the way this works is that there are three wings. Each of them has two boss encounters. So there's like six bosses in total. And there's always like a little kind of a gauntlet or like a little, you know, like section before the boss that you go through where you learn some of the mechanics of those boss fights. So when you go in there for the first time, even if you don't remember all the stuff I'm going to tell you now, you should pay attention to what is actually going on. Where are you going? What are you clicking? Because most of these things will come back in the boss fights. Basically, those sections are a short introduction to what the bosses do, and they kind of teach you what is going on. On top of this, there's also the bonus reward. You can see this here right now. Uh, so on the right, you have like this little bar that fills up the Kazura treasury and there's like these marked like red elites that you can find uh, in those like uh, you know first sections of the map here so you can see them on the mini map right now here on the top right just like some little elites you blast them down you fill this treasure bar uh, there are like you know x of them per per zone uh, it kind of depends on where you are in which wing uh, how many of them you have to kill and before you go to the boss but you basically get more dark little coins so if you want to like for example farm those transmogs then you can like clear uh, the Dark Citadel and then get more coins by doing the extra reward, for example. Overall, I think if you just care about the weekly cash, which is kind of the main reward here, I would say you don't really worry too much about finishing the bonus here, but you can like, explore the first part of the dungeon and then, you know, try to uh, find more of these guys and then fill up the, tre the treasure extra reward and get a bit more coins, basically. Overall, not really important, I would say. Now, here's already a mechanic that uh, you get introduced to very early, which comes back pretty often. So you have like these soul siphons, for example. So it's a bit like the Helltide thing where you have like this little circle and you have to stand in it and defeat enemies or like in the Infernal Hordes of the Siphons, for example. So it kind of works the same thing. And uh, you also have these Ward Guardians. There's like multiple types of Guardians you find throughout the Dark Citadel. There's like the Ward Guardians, the Barrier Guardians, and whatever. So usually like some kind of like special monster you have to defeat to unlock something. So in this case, you have like these Soul Wards here. You can see them uh, that you click on and then they open the door or they, they remove a barrier and you can enter and these kind of things. And uh, there's a lot of like clickable and interactables that uh, are pretty important for most of these boss fights. So also something to keep in mind. Occasionally there's also like a thing you have to pick up and then you have to bring it back and like put it in one of these wards, for example, to cleanse the debuff that will otherwise kill you. Or you have to pick up something from the ground and then you, uh, replace your skill bar with a counter spell and it can reflect a, an ability back to one of the bosses and these kind of things. And you have to play those mechanics in order to actually take them down because sometimes they have like, you know, invulnerable phases and then you have to do that thing to remove that invulnerability and these kind of things. Here's another such mechanic that appears very often, which is like standing on something on the ground. So this can be uh, easily missed sometimes, but you always have these like uh, pressure plates you step on them and then the door opens here. So in, uh, this here, for example, so the die side goes to the left there and opens the door. And then, you know, someone else can go to the top there and open the other door. 
And there's similar stuff like that where sometimes there's a portal and you have like, you know, one on the left, one on the right, and you have to stand on them. Not everyone has to do that, but you have to have at least two people in order to do these kind of things. Another important mechanic that you're going to encounter multiple times are gateways. They look like this. They have like this kind of like a uh, round circle. They're also part of various boss fights where sometimes you teleport to another area inside the boss fight and then you, you fight like the boss in two areas at once and these kind of things. And uh, this works like this here, so that sometimes there's like a charge mechanic, like you have to defeat some elites, for example, and then they drop uh, one of the shards, and then you click on the gateway in order to fully charge it. And once that happens, there's like a special animation, and you have a few seconds time to step into the gateway, and then you get teleported with it. So here, see this right now, this is like this round thing now. For example, here it also says enter the gateway right now. So you go there and this is the animation here. And when this finishes, boom, you get teleported with it. In general, if you are not really sure what to do, I do recommend you to always check the uh, objectives on the right. They actually teach you and tell you what to do. So if you don't know exactly what is going on, then take a look here at what it says on the right. Like this text is your guide through the entire Citadel. And as I mentioned, if you don't remember everything that I'm telling you now, then you can always check there and have like a little cheat sheet basically. Another thing that's important to know about those gateways is that they actually just kind of suck in everyone who's standing on them or sometimes only part of the group. So here, as you see, for example, we have Chronix, Condis and me standing on it. But this gateway in particular actually only pulls two people at once. So you have to go through it a second time. This is something that threw me off a little bit when I did it the first time. I was like, okay, like once I thought it just didn't work or something like that. But this is how some of those gateways work. Sometimes they pull in everyone, sometimes they only pull some people, I believe. Uh, so this also depends a little bit on the boss fight. In some cases, like the entire group needs to go to, you know, the second phase in the gateway and do something there. Sometimes you have like two people, uh, you know, in one place, two people in another place. And, uh, you know, only half the group goes to the other side, for example. Another kind of important mechanic is like uh, debuffs and debuff cleansing. So you see this here right now. This is a so-called soul dampener. You're also going to encounter these a few times. And uh, these are these little bubbles that um, remove the uh, debuff that you get here. So just walking around, you have this debuff here. You see this uh, red icon. It says you are dying. Effectively, you take a dot damage and it stacks up to 100. And even if you could out heal it, you will just instantly die. So this is kind of how that works. So you need to go into those bubbles and cleanse debuff. And another thing is that you see these like souls flying off here from this uh, barrier. This is kind of the path that you're supposed to take. So you're supposed to follow those and then eventually find another one of those bubbles, cleanse the debuffs and go through. This is also something that can be easily overlooked uh, when you go in there for the first time. So this is, for example, the first thing right now, but it does come back later on as well. So you want to make sure that you don't accidentally die. You also have this uh, icon above your character actually that shows you the same bar. So it fills like up the icon slowly. You see here it's like a quarter full now and then you go in there, it's gone and so on. So you can kind of look at that as well. So the first wing and before the first boss teaches you a lot of the stuff that you need to know and pay attention to later in the run. But there's more stuff that comes as you go. Uh, so not every mechanic or every wing is the same. And then we finally find the first boss. So this is here. This is uh, Kubal, the Shadow Breaker. This is like a very easy, simple introductory boss. He doesn't really do much, but there are some boss mechanics that also keep coming back here. So number one is you see this white line here that uh, goes from Dioxide towards the boss. This is the aggro. So you can see like who the boss is actually following right now. Uh, I'm not sure if every boss has that, but at least multiple bosses do that. And in some cases, some bosses actually have a lot of damage output and you kind of need to kite them around. Like whoever has the aggro just tries to run away and the other guys try to deal damage. In our case, we took it a bit slow to look at the mechanics and stuff. Kubal is a very simple boss. He just does some AOE. He follows you around. He charges a little bit. He doesn't really do much and you just blast him down. So there's not that much to know about this boss in particular. What is worth mentioning though is that you can actually use raid markers in some of those fights. So this could be relevant. So you see them here right now. This is a little bit like the, the WoW raid markers as well. You can drop them on top of your character. You can't really choose where to put them like with a cursor or something. But they drop under your character and you can try to like mark certain things if you want to communicate with your party members or you say, okay, like you always put this marker, you always put that marker, and then you can say, okay, like I'm going here, I'm going there for like a, you know, a, a very quick way of coordinating, especially if you don't have voice comms. So there's multiple colors and you can put them on your emote wheel in the game. And then you can also, for example, keybind those emote wheels. So you can just put them with one button. And this is also the final part of the first wing, which is the second boss. As I mentioned, there's always two bosses and usually the first boss has like a bit of a longer, you know, path. And then the second boss has a relatively short path. 
So I usually reach the second boss relatively quickly after the first. So in this case, we have Gorshak, the first Ascendant. That is uh, the second boss here and the final boss of the first swing. So he's one of those examples where you have like this aggro marker and someone is um, kiting him around and he actually hurts like a truck. So he, he has like this big hammer and he does a lot of damage. So you got to be careful of him. Then he also becomes uh, invulnerable sometimes, as you can see here. So this is like one of those phases. And then you have this gateway you see here in the middle that uh, you have to charge again, similar to what he did before. So this is what I mean with you should pay attention as you progress towards the boss to what you are doing, because a lot of the mechanics are coming back every time. And this is exactly one of those cases. So you have to slay some elites, charge the gateway, and then you send like two people down to fight him in the uh, you know spirit world, basically. And uh, then you can actually attack him there and then remove his invulnerability and take him down. For this boss in particular, you also want to make sure that you don't really stack the uh, ground AoE on top of the gateway. So you see this here, for example, uh, here like uh, Chronix and uh, Dykes are just left to the, the spirit world, basically. Two people stay up and they have to try to bring them back. So effectively, you have to charge the gateway again to then bring your party back to the, the real world and uh, you have to coordinate and then they have to do their thing in the other world. Usually it's faster for the people that go through the gateway to finish before you get all these spawns here to charge the gateway. So it's kind of like timed in a way that you don't have to really like do very precise timing, I guess. But uh, either way, you need to coordinate this and then make sure that uh, the party comes back and you can fight them together again. So I can also show the other perspective, which is we charge the gateway and now I'm going down to do the thing in the spirit world. So it looks like this here. So there's a bunch of these guardians. So you see here something that we have seen before. The board guardians, they drop an item. You put it on the uh, soul ward and like this here or ceiling ward, uh, just like what he did earlier in, in the part of the dungeon, basically. And then you can uh, grab the soul essence here. So there's like a fragment of him that comes out. You defeat it. Uh, you also see here, for example, the stacks are back. So uh, this is like part of the reason why you want to charge the gateway again. The other people that are still fighting the boss and cutting him around uh, in the upside world, um, they have to, for example, bring you back with the gateway. So you stand there in the middle and then at some point they will charge it. You come back with the soul essence and you make the boss vulnerable again. So this is the case now, for example, I'm done here, they charge the gateway, you go in, boom, click the thing, and then the invulnerability will break and you defeat the boss. That's Gorshak. And that was the first wing, so it's relatively simple, it's like an introductory wing. Uh, the second wing, I would say, is the hardest one out of these. And then the third wing it has the best boss, I would say. The coolest boss is Sagral, it's like the big boss at the end, basically. It has like a really cool multi-stage fight and so on. But the hardest one is probably the second one, thanks to the second boss. And then get a bunch of rewards here. So there's a bunch of like Dark Citadel specific rewards like the portable anvil and there's like some scrolls where you can pop out health potions for example or you can spawn a goblet if you want and these kind of little things. You get the coins, you get some loot. I think every boss for example drops a rune and there's like a relatively decent chance of getting a legendary rune. So it's kind of, kind of nice farming this stuff just for the runes for example. And I think generally they want to beef up the rewards a little bit more as well to make this more worthwhile. So we'll see how valuable it will be to do the Dark Citadel um, like more than once a week. We also learned that, for example, you can do this on alts even every week. So you can like make multiple max level characters, uh, potentially even of the same build, just swap your gear from character to character and <laughs> farm the Citadel. So this might be a strategy, but either way, it looks uh, relatively decent. After you finish the first swing, you unlock the second one, the Labyrinth of Souls. So again, we have two bosses here and there's a bunch more stuff to kind of go through. There's a, a few new mechanics. So in this case, you're at the first part of the dungeon, you uh, find the barrier guardians. There's a lot of stuff with like these barrier guardians where like, you know, a certain door unlocks after you defeat the guy. It's also featured in the final boss fight, for example, where some of these guys appear. You have to blast them down and then take an item from behind that barrier that just got removed and then bring it back to, to the boss, for example. So a bunch of stuff like that. But otherwise, a lot of the mechanics come back in a similar form. So here again are pressure plates. You stand on them, you open the portal by walking on these things here on the ground. So one left, one right, you go through the portal and then you get teleported to the next area. So this is also featured in some of the boss fights. And we also have uh, the charged soul siphons again. So this is kind of how that works here again. So we have a bunch of these you want to spread out. Everyone does their soul siphon, for example, and then you open the barrier and you get something there. Fast forward to the first boss in the second wing. This is Farrok the Incinerator. And uh, this guy has a pretty cheeky mechanic where uh, if you start the fight and you're not prepared, <laughs> then you will die. 
There's like these barrier wards here. So you click them and you get like an invulnerability bubble around here. And he does like some big fire Nova AOE here. And there's motor of them uh, positioned in the room. You can see them top left, right, bottom. And you can activate them throughout the fight to become immune to his damage, which is very important or else you get a one shot. So as you start a fight and click on the barrier ward, you will see this. This looks like this. Boom. So if you don't stand in a bubble, that's it. And I think there's no way to dodge it or survive it or something like that. I think it's just like literally infinite damage. So especially on hardcore, beware of this. The way this is done correctly is that you press on the thing here when you stand together like this. This engages the fight and this kind of tells you, oh, okay, this is how that works. And then he does three Novas and then you can attack him and go out of the bubble. And throughout the fight, periodically, he will summon a maze where you have to then go out of the maze. You have like, you know, 10 seconds or something to make your way to one of those barriers, click it, and then he does the big Nova again. And there's a bunch of other like fire abilities going on. Like here's the fire rain and some, you know, fire ground thoughts and some fire attacks. Yeah, just kind of try to survive them, out heal them, but they're nothing really crazy. The biggest thing here is the maze. It looks like this here. So he becomes invulnerable. He shields himself. He pulls you around. And then you have to try to find one of those barrier wards, go there. And there's also a mechanic here that's kind of important. It's called Impending Doom. You can see this here sticking up on the right. Uh, this is a mechanic that comes back in many of those boss fights, which is effectively kind of like a enraged timer. So if you if this bar fills, you lose, basically. Uh, so there's like multiple names of this, but it's always the same thing. It fills up over time. And if you don't do a certain thing until then, then it's over, so to say which is usually kind of easy to avoid uh, unless you have like zero damage at all. So it's not really that bad. But in this case, for example, it fills up very fast. It shows you when he casts his big fire Nova. And that's the entire fight. And then comes Lorzul, the Gorger. This is the hardest boss in the Citadel, I would say. Uh, he also needs the most coordination and uh, the most like speed, I guess. So he does a lot of damage and uh, it just requires the most damage from you as well. So that's what I found at least. And I think it's going to be the absolute hardcore killer on Torment 4. Uh, so he does, he does hit like a truck and it's hard to avoid it, at least as a melee character. And best case, at least on Torment 4, you bring uh, at least one range build that really, you know, pumps some single target damage. So the way that this boss fight works is that you kind of have all of the previous mechanics together at once. So there are these barrier guardians who defeat these big dudes here. They open um, a door. So you can see this here, a barrier has been dispelled as you defeat this guy. So one of the doors opens, there's like an item that drops, and then you have to kind of bring that back and press on this uh, ceiling ward. And then you see here there is five different uh, slots. Uh, so right now there's only two until um, the sec second stage of the fight. And then there's going to be five of them. And you have to open these doors here the, in the labyrinth. Uh, so you see here there's, it opens like all the doors now, like top, the bottom left, and bottom right. And then you want to spread out and find all the barrier guardians in various places in this little labyrinth. So there's like a a whole like you know you know pathway of you know interconnected uh, holes and stuff like that and you can also see here these souls consumed uh, bar so it's again like the uh, impending doom for example so the boss just kind of starts walking around and consumes souls and becomes more powerful and i think at some point when this fills up you lose basically you can actually slow down the boss with this by just kind of like keeping one guy uh, stuck to the boss as he walks through this labyrinth and consumes souls and you can actually destroy those souls which is a nice little extra to give you more time to do this thing. But effectively, you have these uh, different uh, ceiling wards here and these different barrier guardians in this maze. So this is what it looks like. It's like this little triangle, basically. And it's like these little rooms. There's one here at the top. There's one here on the right, one here on the left. And you have to try to find those barrier guardians, which are located in various places, and then defeat them. This opens one of the doors, and then someone else from your party that is nearby grabs it, brings it back, and clicks it on the uh, thing. And then someone from your party goes into the room, grabs the thing, brings it back, and clicks on the ceiling ward. And once you have done that a few times uh, and have all of them collected, Lozu will become active again and the impending doom will disappear. So you can fight him again and you kind of go to the next phase and you have to do this two times. Now, the one thing that makes this boss in particular very dangerous is that he just has a lot of damage output. He throws out like a bunch of projectiles 
He shoots like uh, some also kind of flames or something like that. And uh, he also has like some ground effects. So there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff to dodge, especially for melee characters. And he hurts like a truck on the higher torment levels. In addition, you see this here right now, he bombards you while you are in the labyrinth. So you want to pay attention to that as well. Uh, so as you're walking around and you think uh, there's not really much going on, you can sometimes get sniped. So you want to pay attention to that. And this is basically the rest of the fight. And I can tell you it's very easy to die to this boss. <laughs> <laughs> Even on Torment 3 here, for example, we are doing so Torment 3 right now. And I had a pretty solid character. He can melt you pretty fast. I did notice that this is cold damage, so if you somehow get like extra maximum cold rest or something like that, or at least if you're not capped on cold, you definitely want to cap it for this fight. So this is the most important uh, resistance here for this. And that's it for Lazur. So this is the fight here. This is um, the, the second wing. And with this, you have completed the hardest part, I would say, just because this boss is kind of like the craziest one in my book. Maybe it's a bit overtuned. On the other hand, it's also fun to have a tough one here. And this opens up the last portal. This is the Dominion of Sagral. Sagral is the big Khazra boss, basically. Uh, this is, again, a two-boss wing. Uh, so it is the last one. And once you have finished that one, you get the weekly reward. In this part, you have a bit of like splitting up to do. For example, here you have these pressure plates again. You open the portals. But this time you actually split up the group between, you know, left and right, and you have to go two pathways. Uh, so you want to kind of coordinate this and make sure that, you know, for example, two guys that are equally strong go together, and then two guys that are also equally strong go on the other side. And you have a bunch of stuff like, okay, take the wards there and put it on the ward. So kind of similar stuff. And here comes this counterspell mechanic that I mentioned earlier. So this looks like this here. So we have um, this little like floating ball, basically, that they shoot out. And there is like an enemy that they can kill, which uh, is like a spell guardian, I think they're called. Called. yeah that these here like these fat dudes and there's like a clickable so you can click on this thing and this replaces your skill bar with a counter spell and then you just kind of like walk next to this thing and you press it uh not like dark side here for example who um just got blasted with that thing but uh you kind of like press any of your buttons and you will counter spell it and it will fly back to the statue or later to the boss so you have to do this in both of the boss encounters in order to trigger something important so correctly done, it looks like this here. So Dyxide presses it, and then it flies back, it opens the gateway, you go in, and boom, you go to the next phase. And with this, you also start the first boss fight in the last thing. This is Hearst and Warshock. So here, you're just gonna blast down one of them as fast as possible, and then the second one becomes empowered and goes crazy. I'm not sure if it's worth it to try to DPS them both down together at the same time or if they heal up, but uh, we just kind of like killed one and then killed the other. But yeah, you could have this kind of thing here. You see here, this is the counter spell thing. You just pick it up, it replaces everything. Uh, you just can't left click. And then you have to go to this orb and you see here, it flies back to the boss. So I'm gonna show this again. You can actually do this from you know, like even behind the orb. You see this here, you don't have to like stand in front of it, for example, it just shows you the path. And then you click on it and it has like a nova around you and as long as this nova hits this ball it will fly back to the boss you do the gateway you go in with your entire party actually and then you can blast down one of the bosses here and here you have two options so either one guy stays behind and he can like pass the gateway again with uh, the same fashion so you do a counter attack you spawn the gateway you can pull everyone back because here again you get the stacks so you can't stay in this phase forever but if you kill the boss fast like this then the gateway opens and you just get back like this and uh, you can go home basically. So this fight is very simple. All you have to do is go down and then basically kill them in the spirit world where they are actually attackable because in the uh, real world they are not attackable. So you just have to go down with basically your entire party and then blast the boss with the counter spell if you have to go back. Otherwise just, you know, kill him and that's it. Pretty simple fight, but there's a lot of stuff going on with like extra projectiles and uh, like damage that they deal to you. So you want to be a bit careful of that. And then you get the final reward here after defeating the boss. And lastly, we have Sagral. This is like the big boss here. This is like this guy and he has kind of empowered himself with almost all of those mechanics that you have seen before throughout the Dark Citadel. So here you have a bunch of these soul siphons. So you see here, there's exactly four of them. Uh, so you want to spread out and charge these soul siphons after defeating a bunch of these ads. So he keeps spawning monsters all the time and stuff like that. And uh, he just bombards you with uh, lots of extra attacks all the time. So uh, here you fight him a little bit in the uh, spirit world. Again, there's like a gateway that opens and he does a bunch of abilities that look like this. I should explain those abilities here. So he does two different circles. One is this uh, full right circle that is kind of small. So this is like an AOE slam you want to get out of. So you want to try to dodge this. And then he usually follows up with the other circle. It's like the larger circle. 
And here you want to go inside of the circle because then it spawns a wave that goes outside and you can't actually avoid it even at the edge of the um, you know arena here uh, unless you like jump over it with like Thor or like go through it with flame shield or something like that. So here it just kind of melts you and you need to first go out of the AOE and then into the circle. Again, you have to think that you stack up this uh, debuff on you. So this is like the same old thing. You don't want to get to 100 health stacks or even close to that because it will just drain your life. And instead you kind of like charge the gateway, you go back and then you, uh, he is becoming immune again here in the, um, the real world and you have to go down through the gateway again later in order to attack him again. So here's a bunch of ads spawning and then you have um, the soul siphons, you know, the four things that I mentioned here at the start, you need, they need to become active. Everyone picks one of them and then you have to charge those. You also only have limited time to do that. You see this here, we have the soul entanglement debuff. This is again, like, like the impending doom. If that happens, you lose and you have to kind of finish this entire phase before this bar fills up. And after you have fin fully charged those um, soul siphons here, everyone has this mark on them. You see here, there's like, you know, this Kazra head on me. And then there's like a ritual sigil that drops from one of these enemies at each of those soul siphons. And everyone has to find their own mark. So if, for example, if someone has an eye and he has to click on that thing and I have this Kazra head, I need to click on the Kazra head. If I click it, it actually doesn't work. So you have to find the matching symbol here, as it says. And otherwise, if you click on the wrong one, you actually get punished. So if you have voice comms, it's a good time to call out which one dropped for you so that people can go to that corner and click it. Otherwise, you know, whenever you finish charging the soul siphon thing and you know that, okay, this is the time now, you can also just like kind of do one circle around the room, try to find your symbol and then click that thing. And lastly, the final mandatory mechanic here in this fight is the counter spell. So this comes back again, he shoots out these balls and you have to find the counter spell guy and then do the, uh, you know, reflex back into the boss in order to activate the gateway. So this is how we go back down to the spirit world where you can actually attack Zangra. So in my case, I failed it once here and then I did it again, but it had a dot on me. So I died <laughs> after pressing it, but I reflected it back successfully. And then, you know, the gateway opens. You want to try to get in there with the entire party. There's no reason to stay up there. And then you can fight him again. There's a bunch of ads spawning. They don't really do anything. You just want to try to depass the boss as much as possible while dodging the circles because they can kill you very easily. And he also starts shooting some really big laser beams at you in his face. So this is like uh, another thing you have to dodge here, which looks like this. He teleports back and then he starts doing these lasers. So you can just kind of like evade out of them. It's not that hard, but uh, there's a lot of them. There's the circles going on. So a bunch of stuff on the ground that they have to dodge here. All of this hurts. And that's the entire fight. So Zagral has definitely the most stuff going on. I do find him also one of the tougher bosses, probably the second toughest. I think Lozul, like from the second wing, is a bit harder just because he has so much damage. But there's more mechanics on Zagral. He kind of like combines everything from the entire Dark Citadel. So you want to make sure that you're aware of what happened before that. What did you already do in the other boss fights? And then you just have have everything at once basically and then boom you get the rewards so you get the weekly cash after defeating him you get a bunch of loot that he drops a bunch of uniques runes whatever and this is it and that's also it for the dark Citadel guide as i mentioned we will have a full run with voice comms and stuff uploaded so get ready for that it was pretty fun <laughs> this is basically this run that i was showing here a little bit but uh we are also teaching dark side who is doing this for the first time i had already completed a run before that and uh, i know most of the stuff now but uh it was a pretty hilarious run so we were just like talking smack and having fun basically so if you want to see the full thing as dark side learns it and we show everything off then you can also go watch that run otherwise i hope you enjoyed this guide here I wish you good luck in the dark side a little i think it's gonna be pretty fun especially the first few times around We'll see about the longevity of this system, but I think it's kind of like a cool and extra introduction. Even for me as usually an SSF player, I had a really good time here. So hope you liked this video here. Uh, stay tuned for a lot more guides. So we're going to be pumping out a spirit one builds, other, you know, guides for the expansion as well. So check my YouTube here for more uploads and otherwise good luck in the expansion. See you guys next time.